next project. Finally getting round to sorting out this chaos and the first task I have to do is to move all this stuff out of the way. I was initially going to put the shelving on that side, however there's an inset for a Velux window which means that the roof trusses are not uniform in that particular area. They're not perfectly uniform anyway. They're sort of like 36 centimetres, 38 centimetres, depending on which one. So anyway, I'm going to get on with moving all this stuff out of the way. In hindsight, I'm actually very pleased with my motivation. I cracked on with this more or less straight away after finishing the last video and I'm chuffed to bits with the way it's turned out. This is a good time to stop and make a few comments on the dust extraction hoovering system. As you can see from the inset, I started off using the vax to hoover up all the stour and dirt and dust in this area and the reason for that is I spread the pure sawdust and chippings amongst my trees, my small mini forest. I don't use any treated timber so this is very environmentally friendly. The bugs in the trees will love it. So I've been using the vax for any non-environmentally friendly hoovering that I have to do and in the attic there there's lots of plastic beads from the polystyrene insulation for example. Anyways the vax clogs regularly, there's quite a lot of rock wool from the other insulation material in the attic and it would clog regularly and just basically became a real pain in the butt. The subject of the last video I made was my dust extraction system and I've made a couple of other incremental improvements to it since the last video. Primarily I extended the long hose for the general hoovering so this now reaches the entire length of the attic, the entire area of the downstairs including through the back into the grow room. So chuffed bits with this, it's just the same hose, it's a Sealy hose. I'll leave all the links in the description and page on my website um2.com if you want to find out more about the bits and pieces. Anyways, I connected it up using these rubber cuffs and it's really worked out well. The other slight improvement that I made, I'm saying slight but it, it's quite significant really. Initially I was using this wider diameter 50ml hose and it's great, it's very flexible. However, it's also quite thin and a shard of thin teak, I think it would be, that came off the tabletop saw and entered the dust extraction system, pierced it and that obviously isn't great for your dust extraction if you've got holes in it. So at the time I'd also ordered up this more solid plastic hose, it's less flexible, however it's very strong. And again, I used a rubber cuff to secure it onto the rest of the dust extraction system. And these rubber cuffs really work well, really pleased with them. Back to organising this area and creating the shelving, I did consider a couple of other solutions just in my head and went to the 3D software to draw out this particular solution. I still wasn't convinced that it was going to work in actuality. I thought the rake of the roof I might sort of be an issue but really it's actually worked out well. I'm not having any 
particular issues. So all in all, really pleased with how this has worked out. It did involve a lot of ripping up of material, timber, though it was an economical use of the actual timber I had on site. So quite pleased all in all. The dust extraction, both from the tabletop saw and the mitre saw, was just fabulous. Worked really well. I reckon I'm probably collecting well over 95%. Over Anyways, the tabletop saw, a Bosch GTS 10XC, has never lived up to my highest expectations. The blades always had a little bit of a wobble. And this isn't an alignment issue with the actual table. So it's not something you can adjust the actual table to get the, the fence to run true to the blade. This is actually the blade wobbling. Okay, so let's just see how far out it actually is. Okay, about 0.43 of a millimetre, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's definitely making a, a difference. Half a dozen goes of marking it, grinding off a small bit, putting it back together, checking it, marking the high spot again, grinding off, and now below 0.1 of a millimetre is well within bounds certainly for all the woodworking that I'll be doing and that's been a niggling issue with me for a bit since I've got the table saw since I first bought it a couple of years ago so that's just fantastic to get that resolved and that's improved my humour for the day no end really chuffed These are bespoke projects, so quite a bit of trial and error, offer it up, measure it up, check that it all fits in before cracking on with things.
the initial plan had been to move all the storage cartons from the existing shelving onto the new shelves, but it became apparent it would be much easier for me to take all the storage boxes out, disassemble the existing shelving cabinets, take them downstairs and give myself space to work.
it would be impossible to calculate just how much time the self-leveling laser saved me on doing this. It, it just made it so much easier, so much quicker. This floor is uh, a little bit bouncy. The self-leveling laser has a small magnet in the bottom, so when it does bounce, it very quickly stabilizes. So just really fabulous piece of kit. Neat, tidy and organised. All done, including an area with good lighting and a photographic rig all set up where I can take photographs of all the spare parts I sell on my website, um2.com, curtain hooks, etc. Spare parts for curtain tracks. And I'm absolutely delighted with the way this has worked out. It's now so easy to process the orders from that website with it all set up and organised the way it is. Photographing all the products, cataloguing them will just be so much easier now. I really am delighted. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you managed to take something from it. Catch you on the next one.